afternoon, good evening, hello, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, happy new year. This will be the first time that I'm seeing you guys since last year. I am so honored to be your sister in Christ, and I thank you all for being my sisters and brothers in Christ. And of course, I thank you all for coming to hear with us, saith the Lord. So I have a word from God today. And as you can see from the title, God is going to be speaking to us concerning the time frames between January and June of 2021. God is going to be giving us bits and pieces of the unraveling of our harvest. He's not giving us everything. You know, we only prophesy in part, but he is giving us enough for us to be in expectation to receive those things or some of the things that God has promised us to, to, to reap the harvest, to reap what we sowed, the seeds that we sowed in 2020, okay? This word is for the righteous. And the reason why I'm saying around um, January through June is because God didn't give me any exact dates. He just stated to me that it will be the first six months of the year of 2021. We will begin to see the unraveling of our 2021 harvest. Also, today's word by no means is an exhaustive list of what God has planned for us during these time frames. I am just sharing with you what God spoke to me about. So I want to be clear on that, okay? And if you guys have been following this channel for a while, many of you already know that I always encourage you guys to do what? To test the spirit with every single word that comes out of my mouth on behalf of God. You should be testing the spirit. You should be testing the spirit by the spirit with any servant of the Lord that is prophesying to you, that is speaking to you that is teaching or preaching and I also have a video in the description box guys it's an older video but I still feel like it's relevant and it gives you tips on how you should test the spirit how you should be going to God to ask him whether a word that you have heard is for you or if it's something that you need not to accept in your life so before we get into the word of the Lord on today let's go ahead and say a quick prayer Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father God, we come to you humbly and hungry for the word of God on today. Father, we ask that you open up our hearts and minds to receive the knowledge and wisdom that we so desperately need from you. Father, we invite Jesus Christ, Father God, to rule and reign in our hearts. Father, we ask that you dispatch the angels to surround us during this fellowship on today. Father, you are the Alpha. You are the Omega, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you for being our source in all that we are and all that we do. Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to bestow himself over us and to help us obey you, to help us to hear from you, and to help us to stay in alignment with the plans that you have for our lives. Father, not my will, but yours. I ask that you will only allow for the Holy Spirit to flow through me as I speak to your beloved, as I speak with thus saith the Lord. Father, we seek your wisdom and insight, and we want to have a full understanding of all circumstances that concern us. Father, fill us with your knowledge so that we will walk on the straight and narrow path that only leads to the kingdom of heaven. Lord, help us to be faithful and following all your ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, amen. So people of God, the Lord began to minister to me this past Friday. I was in the book of Joshua chapter one. And when I got to verses six through nine-ish area, that's when God began to deal with me. That's when he began to minister to me. And the first thing that took place after I read it the first time, I had like this really quick vision. And the vision, God was revealing to me people. There were people in this vision. And within the vision, it, it appeared, it felt like it was a reveal. It felt like it was an unraveling of harvest, like God was beginning to unwrap the gifts. God was beginning to unwrap the harvest for the people. And as I was looking in the vision, one of the things that I focused on the most was the expressions on the faces of the people that were there. 
I saw some people, and there were men and women in this vision, I saw some people were happy. I saw that some people looked really overwhelmed with joy. I saw um, expressions of surprise in a few people, right? And it was a simultaneous thing. I was kind of going back and forth, and then the vision just faded. So, of course, I asked God, I said, Lord, what does this vision that you showed me have to do with what I'm reading? And he said, beloved, I want you to go back and read verses six through nine. I kept hearing six through nine in my spirit. So, guys, if you have time, you can get your Bibles and get your phone. And I'm going to read Joshua chapter one, verses six through nine, because this is the foundation of the word from the Lord. So verse six says, be strong and of good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse seven, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse eight, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then shalt have good success. Verse nine, have not I commanded thee be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So guys, here is what God told me regarding verses six through seven. If you read the verses six through seven, they start off by saying that the Lord is requiring his people to be courageous. Why is God saying that? He is saying that because he wants to address the coming harvest for 2021. The Lord is saying that the coming harvests that many of you are getting ready to receive that he has prepared for you based off of the seeds that you planted in 2020 that you previously planted in the last season. For some of you, he's saying that what you're gonna find in your harvest is going to promote fear for many of you. It's gonna pro it's gonna promote some kind of fear in you. And, and and for some of you, God is saying that when you receive your harvest, as you begin to see the manifestation, the unfolding and the unraveling of your harvest, some of you are gonna experience sort of a lack of confidence. God is saying that there are gonna be others of you that are going to be a little bit scared of what comes from the harvest. And there are even a couple of you that God is saying that you're gonna think that God gave you the wrong harvest. You're gonna think that the harvest is not yours. You're gonna think that the harvest belongs to somebody else, right? And how do I know that people of God? Because the Lord gave me that vision to bring confirmation to what he was saying. In the vision, I saw expressions of people. God allowed for me to focus on the expressions of the people that were in my vision. Some people appeared to be surprised. Some people appeared to be overwhelmed. Some people appeared to be happy, right? And the reason why these expressions were on the faces of these people that I saw in the vision is because what they saw was not expected. What they saw was bigger than what they had anticipated. Hallelujah. What they saw was something that they have never seen before. And so that explained the expressions that God had me focus on in the vision as I was reading Joshua 1, 6 through 9. People of God, the Lord is saying that the unraveling of our harvests, the unraveling of our harvests are going to promote some of the following things. He's given me some things that some of us are going to see. Again, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is what God gave me. One of the things that God is saying 
as the harvests begin to unravel this year. He says that many of you are getting ready to meet new people in your life. These are people that you have never met before. And these people are going to help you take your idea. They're going to help you take your ministry. They're going to help you take your business to the next level. We talked about this a little bit in part two of, of last year's harvest message where God was going to begin to send the divine connections and God said that you will be able to trust these people because he himself has sent them. He himself has sent them. He's saying that he still wants you to exercise this ermine and come to him with all connections. However, the people that will come to you will have you in mind. They will serve you because of the seeds that you previously planted in your last season. God is also saying that the unraveling of, of, of our harvest, for some of us, you're going to be getting ready to preach. You're getting ready to preach somewhere. God is saying that he's getting ready to set you up to teach. He's getting ready to set you up to go somewhere and speak and this place that you're going to go to is going to be a place that you have never been before. You are going to be invited. God is saying that as your harvest is unraveling in this season, you're going to begin to receive invites. You're going to begin to receive emails. You're going to begin to receive phone calls. And people are going to be asking you to come here, come there, come there, right? And of course, you're going to take these to the throne. You're going to talk to God and ask him what he's going to allow for you to do, where he's going to allow for you to preach, where he's going to allow for you to teach. But those opportunities will be coming out of many of your harvest. For those of you that God is bringing into ministry, for those of you where God is bringing you into some sort of a business or, or a service where you'll be teaching or a ministry that you're going to be preaching. And also God is showing me that there are some of you that are in business for yourself or your ministries or something like that. And you are already producing things. You're already shipping things out to people, shipping out products, providing services. But God is saying that the volume, the volume of these products and services that you are offering right now is going to multiply. Hallelujah. So you were sending out a couple of packages here. You were doing a couple of classes here. You were doing some teaching here. You were tutoring here or something like that. It was maybe one or two a month, maybe five or six a month. It was coming in slowly, but God is saying that the requests of your products, the requests of your services are going to multiply. You're going to begin to see an increase of requests for your products or your services. God is saying that some of your harvests are going to unravel that. And God is also showing me that there is someone that's going to be invited to perform. You're going to be invited to sing. You're going to be invited to to lead something as it relates to music, as it relates to singing, as it relates to the choir. Um, you're going to be required to, to, to come in and display your gift of singing, gift of singing. God is saying that somebody is going to be invited. You're going to begin to receive uh, notifications as it relates to someone wanting you come to sing at church or come sing at a function or a convention or you know something like that. And also God is saying that for many of you, your harvest are going to render a financial gift. It is going to come from an unexpected source. This source is a person that may be following you. They may know what you do. They may know your passion. They may know your character. They may believe in you. And also this person is going to be someone that is chosen by God. God has spoken to this person about your needs. God has spoken to this person about what the money is to be used for. It's not going to be used for like your own personal use, buying cars and things like that. No, this gift, this financial gift is actually going to be what's going to catapult your business. It's going to be what's going to get your organization started. It's going to be what's going to get your ministry off the ground. Whatever God is calling you to do in this season, God is saying that some of you are going to receive a financial gift from an unexpected source. This source may not even reveal who they are. They may do it in secret 
or they may not. But God says, don't be surprised if you receive an unexpected financial gift to help you get that thing that you and God have discussed as it relates to what he has planned for you this year, 2021 to do. And there are a slew of other things, guys, that are going to be coming from your harvest. But those are just the specific things that God wanted me to speak about because there's someone that's going to watch this and they're going to know that this is what their harvest is going to unravel for them this year. It's going to resonate in your spirit. As a result of some of these things that are unraveling from our harvest, God is calling us to have a boldness in him. That is what Joshua 6 through 7 is saying. God is calling us to have a boldness in him. God is calling us to have a holy confidence in what we are getting ready to receive from our harvest. And God says that what you are seeing coming from your harvest, as you see the unraveling of your harvest, you need not to feel guilty about what you receive. And don't allow the enemy to try to convince you that you're not supposed to have what God has given you. Why? Because your harvest, once again, is based on the seeds that you previously planted in your last season. And we all know from our previous teachings that what? Reaping and sowing. It is a law. It is a process that is implanted in humankind. So you can't stop it. You can't stop it. If you plant it good, you receive good. If you plant it negative, you receive negative. All right. The harvest is based upon God's law of reaping and sowing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is also saying that we need to be careful with when we receive our harvest, the things that are coming out of our harvest, that we do not forget where we came from. We do not become prideful or arrogant in the things that God is administering to our hearts. Do not forget humbleness. Do not forget praise and worship. Do not forget gratefulness and knowing who your source was knowing where your harvest came from, understanding why you received your harvest, and making sure that you stay in God's perfect will in alignment with what he wants you to do. Not with what somebody else wants you to do. Not with what your flesh wants you to do. But what God wants you to do with the unraveling of the things that are coming from your harvest. So if we go down to verses 8 through 9, it iterates how we should be observing God's laws as we are watching our harvest unravel. And through them, God will make our ways prosperous and we will have good success. That is what verses eight through nine is saying. The Lord wants us to understand that whatever successes we begin to see manifest from our harvest this year, guys, that it comes from God and not the world. We need to understand that the things and the people and the situations and the circumstances that come from our harvest come from God, not the world. God says that our thoughts concerning our harvest should be handled with wisdom. Why? Because in order for us to take full advantage of our harvest, we must first understand that it will not come without opposition or problems. That is one of the things that God is highlighting. He's saying, in order for us to take full advantage of our harvest, we must first understand it will not come without opposition. God is saying that as the harvests are unraveling, we need to be careful with the details that we are sharing with others concerning our harvest. Why? Because there will be devils. There will be demons, there will be witches, and any other wicked power, hallelujah, of the air that will try to sabotage your harvest. And God is saying here too that these spirits can manifest through people around us or at a distance. They can also manifest through family members too. So what this verse is saying is keep the laws of God in our hearts and don't allow for the enemy to take us out of the context of us not being able to be grateful for what God is doing in our lives. We need not to be fearful. We need to be bold in the confidence and knowing that what we are receiving in our harvest are what God himself has planned for our lives. 
There is absolutely nothing that the enemy can do about it. You hear me, guys? And as the word says in Romans chapter 8, 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? So people of God, that is the word from the Lord on today. But God says to anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. You shall be rewarded for the seeds that you have planted in the previous season. Remember, we are here on purpose to glorify God in Jesus' holy name. I love you all. I want you to be blessed. Thank you for subscribing to Shanika Myers United for Christ. Thank you all for becoming members of this ministry. Thank you all for subscribing to our second channel, United for Christ Prayer Room. Thank you for shopping with us. And